اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والعاقبۃ الاہل تقوی والیقین والصلاۃ والسلام علی اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین خاتم النبیین بالقاسم محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و آلہ الطیبین الطاہرین الماسومین علیہ الصلاۃ والسلام و لعنت اللہ علی اعدائهم اجمعین من یوم عذابتهم الى یوم الدین اما بعد السلام علیکم جمیعا و رحمت اللہ Uh, in this series, we are talking about the life of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. In the previous session, we said you can divide the life of Imam Ali alayhi salam into five sessions. The first session is from his birth till the Be'sat of the Holy Prophet, uh, when the Holy Prophet announced that he's a messenger. And from the Be'sat till the migration to Medina, and then from migration to Medina till the demise of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. And then from after the Holy Prophet till the, uh, the duration of the three Khulafa. And then uh, the fifth part is his own, uh, uh, during his, the reign of his own uh, Khilafat or his own government. Today, in this session, we'll talk about uh, the life of Ali ibn Abi Talib salam during the first phase of Islam. From the proclamation of the Holy Prophet, of his prophethood, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, when um, the Holy Prophet was 40, Imam Ali Islam was 10, until the migration to Medina, which is about um, 12 and a half, 13 years. This is um, not the toughest, probably one of the toughest times of Imam Ali Islam's life, but um, it was a difficult time. The Holy Prophet had announced that he's a messenger and his protector was Ali ibn Abi Talib. Um, for the first two years it was uh, hidden, you know, the hidden preaching and then وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتِكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ You know, the Holy Quran uh, said that now start preaching to your family members, your near ones. And he invited his family, he threw his uncle Abu Talib السلام, and he said, oh uncle, please invite everyone. And everyone came. When everyone came, uh, um, to the house of Abu Talib, the entire family, his uncles and aunts, uh, two days he wanted to preach, his other uncle Abu Lahab did not allow him to. Um, the third day when he announced, um, he wanted to speak, his uncle Abu Talib stood up and he made everyone sit down and said, listen to my nephew, whatever he wants to say, listen to him. So the Holy Prophet say, announced to the people that uh, there is no God but Allah and I'm the messenger of Allah and you're not allowed to bury your daughters alive. And so he said the message and he said, whoever helps me in my mission, فَهُوَ أَخِي وَوَسِيِّ وَوَزِيرِ مِنْ بَعْدِ And Tabari has mentioned in, uh, in a place that he also said, وَخَلِيفَةِ مِنْ بَعْدِ Whoever helps me in my mission will be my brother, my wazir, my successor, and my khalifa after me. And they said that when he announced this, one young boy stood up. Imam al-Islam had now become 13. So he stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I will help you in, me, in your mission. So the Holy Prophet announced the second time, the third time, and it was only one person who stood up all three times and it was Imam Ali salam who said, Ya Rasulullah, I will help you in your mission. I may be young, I may be small, my legs may be weak, um, uh, but I will help you in your mission and I will back you throughout. And he fulfilled his promise. You know, the Holy Quran in Surah Ahzab says, Min al mu'minina rajalun. You know, amongst the believers are men. Uh, some of them have fulfilled their promise like Hamza and Jafar and amongst them is one who waits and that is Imam Ali who fulfilled his promise throughout and he waited to have shahadat and martyrdom because 
um, he had promised on day one of the Holy Prophet's announcement to the family that I will help you in your mission. And the Holy Prophet announced that, uh, you know, this is my brother who is going to help me. The beautiful thing is that at that point, uh, Abu Lahab turned around and said to uh, Hazrat Abu Talib, uh, Oh Abu Talib, so far you were obeying your nephew, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now you will have to obey your son, Ali. Meaning even he had understood that Ali is going to be the successor because this announcement meant succession. Nevertheless, it was Imam Ali salam who stood up the, with the Holy Prophet. After the announcement, obviously, the family started creating problems and then slowly the Holy Prophet announced to the whole of Mecca. He stood up on Kuhi Abu Qubais and it was Imam Ali salam backing him throughout. One day the Holy Prophet came back home and uh, وسلم, and Abu Talib asked him, what's wrong? Why do you have marks all over your body? He said, uh, nothing happened. He said, no, tell me the details. He said, well, the Quraysh, uh, the tribes have sent their children to hit me with the stones. So Hazrat Abu Talib said, oh Ali, tomorrow you go with the brother. So the, the story is long, but uh, you know, when Abu Talib went with the Holy Prophet to the houses of the uh, tribal leaders like Abu Sufyan and the rest of them were gathered uh, at the house of Abu Sufyan and said, Abu Sufyan, the children have now started stoning my uh, my nephew, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, it's a matter of children, leave it amongst the children. He said, okay, it's your decision. Then he came home and he said, oh Ali, from tomorrow you go with your brother whenever he goes out. So Imam Ali Islam said, okay, I promise you that I will look after my brother and I will break the bones of all his enemies, you know. I will confront them. And the next day when Imam Ali Islam went out with the Holy Prophet, when the children came to stone him, Imam Ali went forward and stopped all the children. He, he, uh, he gave them a beating, you know, if they were stoning the Holy Prophet. As a child, he fought with all the children of Mecca to confront them not to stone the Holy Prophet and then the Quraysh then went to the tribal leaders Abu Sufyan and Abu Lahab and Utba and Shaiba and everyone that it is Ali who, is, uh, who has uh, battered our children so they all came to the house of Abu Talib and Abu Talib uh, he said to Abu Sufyan he said well it's a matter of children leave it amongst the children uh, he was repeating the same words that Abu Sufyan had given him. So he was Imam Ali al-Islam looking after the Holy Prophet in Mecca. Not only the Holy Prophet, but he was also looking after all the Sahaba that were converting. So he supported the Holy Prophet and he took forward the message of the Holy Prophet to the others. When the troubles increased, it was his older brother Ja'far who took the first group of Muslims uh, on Hijra, on migration to Abyssinia, present day um, uh, Ethiopia, uh, around that place. He took a whole group of people, to Muslims, to Ethiopia, and uh, Imam Ali Islam stayed with the Holy Prophet, remained behind to 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 protect the the religion and also to the Holy Prophet, give him support and and also to the uh, Sahaba who, who had remained in Mecca. During this time, the toughest uh, uh, time of the Holy Prophet's life came and that was um, the, during the preaching, the people started hurting the Holy Prophet in many bad ways. And at the end, they boycotted him and they uh, pushed him out of Mecca and he was taken as like he was he had taken Shaybi Bi Talib as his shelter. Shaybi Bi Talib was like a ship meaning uh, the mountains had blocked it from all around and there's only one entrance and that's where the Holy Prophet lived uh, with his uncle, his wife and cousins and his daughter, um, you know, and few other family members, very few family members. He says this was the toughest 
part of my life. The Holy Prophet ﷺ said two years were the toughest of my life. Uh, they were spent in Shaybib Talib. During this time, he lost his biggest two supporters, Abu Talib and Khadija. Salamullahi alayhima. So he lost both of them because they were both uh, um, affluent and they could not bear the pains of the difficult times in Shaybib Baby Talib and going without food for some days and you know just eating leaves from the trees and it was very difficult. During this time it was Ali ibn Abi Talib that the Holy Prophet had as his greatest support. And at night it was the uh, father of Imam Ali salam, Abu Talib who would say to his son, Oh son you have to sleep uh, in the bed of the Holy Prophet. So he would make them exchange places. He would say okay to the Holy Prophet you move and Ali will sleep in your bed. So that if people attack then, uh, then they don't kill you. Which disbeliever would be willing to sacrifice their son for their nephew if they did not believe in the message of uh, the nephew? So the, the uncle Abu Talib had truly believed in the Holy Prophet as a messenger, so he was willing to sacrifice his son. And it was difficult for any other son to sleep in the bed of the Holy Prophet because the Holy Prophet had a, uh, had a special light and only Ali ibn Abi Talib had that light. Uh, so, you know, so he could protect um, the, the, the Holy Prophet Now that the, the Imam had learned to sleep in the bed of the Holy Prophet, it was in Shia Bibi Talib. Even today you go into Mecca, you go to Jannat Mu'alla and behind Jannat Mu'alla you can see a mountain now. The Ali Saud have now cut the mountain from the front. Um, and behind that mount is Shaybi Bi Talib, you know, the inside, you know, uh, because it was covered. And the support, you know, was, it was the Holy Prophet that the Mecca, people of Mecca had boycotted and not the family of Abu Talib. But Imam Ali al-Islam stayed with the Holy Prophet sallam, during that time. He did not leave the Holy Prophet. So this is the greatest support. You do not find proofs of the other companions and the other family members supporting the Holy Prophet during those difficult times. It was only at Ali ibn Abi Talib, uh, Khadija Salam al -Han, Abu Talib obviously of course. But it was uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib who was there as a support to the Holy Prophet during the most difficult time of his life. And that's why he was the most beloved to the Holy Prophet and the Almighty. Um, Allah Jalla Jalla Allahu and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu during this time in Mecca, the greatest uh, 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 responsibility of Ali ibn Abi Talib was to protect the Holy Prophet, but the second greatest was to deliver the message. Not to just keep the message to himself, but to also deliver it to the others. Preach Islam to others. And you need, you know, that when you say that there are three greatest supports, financial, uh, tribal or you know uh, uh, tribal when I say you know the government sometimes supports someone or tribal support in, do, in those days the governments were not so influential directly they were but they did not directly get involved it was Abu Talib who was a tribal leader so he backed the Holy Prophet financial support came from Khadija and it was the intellectual support that came from Ali ibn Abi Talib he stood with the Holy Prophet in Mecca and preached everything that the Holy Prophet wanted preached. It was him who went to the people and, and preached. So he, um, he delivered the message of the Holy Prophet to the Mecca, people of Mecca and outside. Many people came traveling inside Mecca. Many people converted. Uh, so it wasn't, you know, many people who try and say that it was a sword of Ali ibn Abi Talib who spread the message is not false because he protected the Holy Prophet in Medina. But in Mecca, it was completely uh, intellectual. He never picked up the sword in Mecca. It was the haram of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was his 
uh, intellectual support. I want to very quickly go into a few stories. One is a companion comes from outside Mecca and as soon as he reaches Masjid al-Haram, um, he sees that there is a man sitting next to Kaaba reading Quran, reciting the Holy Quran. And that was the Holy Prophet And he sees Abu Lahab standing at the door who says that um, uh, I do not uh, you know, wish for you to listen to that man. His name is Muhammad, he's my nephew. And he is a, um, he is a magician. If you listen to him, then you will lose your senses and you will be convinced by him what he says to you. So the man said, okay. So he said, how do I avoid listening to him? He said, okay, I'll give you some, some cotton and just place it in your ears and do not listen to him when you're doing tawaf, when you go around Kaaba, when you're in circumambulation of Kaaba. Don't listen to him. So the man comes. And when he comes, he, after a few rounds, he, he decides to listen to the Prophet So he takes out the wool from his ears and he listens and he said, what do you say? He said, you know, so the Holy Prophet preached to him that I say there is no God but Allah, I am the messenger of God. You should not bury your daughters alive and these idols cannot help you. And uh, you should not steal from people, you should not rob them, you should not murder, theft is wrong and you know so he preached and he said well all of you the things you're saying make sense they're all logical so the holy prophet said you all this is my religion he said what do we do in return what do we have to pay you he said nothing for me you have to help the poor people and you so nothing for me so the man said well you know i want to, i believe in what you are saying that the message is correct when he announces to the people obviously the people of mecca start beating him up so the holy prophet quickly tells imam ali ibn Talib salam to go and protect him so it, was only just, it wasn't just the protection of the Holy Prophet, but Imam Ali salam was helping all the people that were converting to Islam. He was protecting them. And it was his uncle Hamza who was also helping. And so this man, they helped him. They, you know, they protected him from the people of Makkah. They took him to the house and, he, and that night he slept. And the next day when he was leaving, he, the Holy Prophet said, okay, leave straight. Uh, out of Makkah, don't go to Masjid al-Haram and preach to the people. He listened, he left, but then he said, no, I just one more time, I want to tell the people of Makkah that they are wrong and the Messenger of Allah is right. And again, the people started beating him up and it was Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, who protected him, who uh, covered him, who said, no, I'm going to help you to, to leave. And then he took him all the way outside Makkah and he said, now you can, you're safe, you can leave. So it was Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, in Makkah for 12 and, a half, 12 and a half, 13 years who protected the Holy Prophet and all the Sahaba that needed protection, he protected them. Yes, there were still martyrdoms and yes, people were still being battered up but you know, whenever uh, he could and he did, he protected them. Also in Mecca, the other thing that his responsibility was that when the Wahi was revealed, the Holy Prophet wanted a person to uh, scribe, you know, uh, write the Wahi down. And it was Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, who was writing the Wahidan, he was writing the surahs. So he would write them down, the Holy Prophet would recite, and he was also Ali ibn Abi Talib who would recite the Quran to the people. Recitation was extremely important. You know, the Holy Quran says, uh, One of the duties, the first duty Allah counts for the Holy Prophet is recitation of the verses of the Holy Quran to, uh, to the Meccans, believers or disbelievers. And that recitation needed to be repeated. People needed to repeatedly listen, listen to the Holy Quran. Other than the Holy Prophet وسلم, it was Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, who uh, repeatedly uh, recited the Holy Quran to the Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Recitation was extremely important. Number one, um, tertil, you know, rec reciting in uh, in, in, a, in a beautiful voice, you know, in good voice is extremely important. Secondly, uh, re recitation in a way that the people understand in a clear uh, tone. Third, it was the recitation that meant that it came from heart with sincere. What comes from heart enters the heart. So the recitation had to be with the purest of the uh, tongue and the purest of the heart, that recitation meant a lot. And that recitation came 
from the Holy Prophet وسلم, and after the Holy Prophet it was Ali ibn Abi Talib وسلم, who gave that beautiful recitation to the people of Makkah. And if the people of Makkah had believed and had practiced it was because of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and after him it was Ali ibn Abi Talib وسلم. And after um, the recitation the other job of Ali ibn Abi Talib was to preach the, the, the correct teachings of Islam, you know, the true teachings of Islam had to, be, had to be delivered to the people. Those true teachings, number one, Tawheed. Look at the sermons of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Only he could deliver those sermons. So, when the Holy Prophet said, you know, قُولُوا لَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا اللَّهُ تُفْلِحُوا um, Say to the people, there is no God but Allah. Who truly understood that and delivered it properly? You know, the Holy Prophet said, no one truly understands God except for me and Ali. So it was Ali ibn Abi Talib who was preaching the true and the right Tawheed, you know, the oneness of God, the divine unity was properly preached to the people from the Holy Prophet and from Ali ibn Abi Talib. The others did not truly understand. Second was the prophethood himself, itself, you know, who truly understood the Holy Prophet? The Holy Prophet said that no one truly understands me except for Allah and Ali. So it was Ali ibn Abi Talib who understood the Holy Prophet and he was giving the right message of the prophethood. He was, del he was preaching to the people, you know, because you still have so many confusions on who the Holy Prophet is, what was his stature, what was uh, he like, you know, who he really was. It was Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, who understood the Holy Prophet and he understood the message of the Prophet. So after Tawheed, it was Nabuwat he was preaching. And then, who understood the message itself? That was the Holy Quran. It was Ali ibn Abi Talib. He is known to be the inheritor and the warith and the uh, true Quran. He was the living Quran. He himself said, Anal, anal, anal Quran al Natiq. I am the talking Quran. So it was him who delivered that message. Now, the, the other thing that Imam Ali was, was doing was, was putting everything into practice. He was truly uh, 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 establishing the teachings of the Holy Prophet, you know, the prayers and the fasting. Oh, fine, you know, the, the, the present day prayer that we have is from Second Hijra, but it was, uh, uh, you know, the Holy Prophet still prayed and he practiced and it was Ali ibn Abi Talib. Who could preach to the Holy Prophet except for the one other than the Holy Prophet, except for the one who never was corrupted. And that was Ali ibn Abi Talib So the So the people knew, people of Makkah knew that the preaching, uh, you know, because they always, you know, the Holy Prophet lived amongst the people for 40 years and he lived an ideal life. He was known to be Sadiq and Amin, the most truthful and the trustworthy. When he earned those titles from the people of Makkah, he wanted someone who was similar, who would be given similar titles and who would, uh, who would earn similar titles. So that's why he was given a title, Siddiq, as Siddiqul Akbar. So you have many, many proofs in the books of Shias and Sunnis, you know, like Islamic books, traditional books, where the Holy Prophet says, As Siddiquna Thalatha. There are three Siddiqs. One, the one who gave witness for Musa. Hazrat Hizqil and the other one was the one Mumin Ali Yaseen, you know, like in Surah Yaseen, in Hazrat Isa's, uh, you know, he sent two people, to be some people, some two prophets, and then he sent a third one, three prophets to Antakya in Turkey to preach to the people. And the people did not believe, and Wajah Rajul Min Aqsal Madina Tayyasa, you know, a man from the end of the city came uh, rushing to preach to the people. Um, and his name was Habib, Habib and Ajar. He was a carpenter. His name was Habib. So the Holy Prophet says that there are three Siddiqs, one for who gave witness for, you know, in the court of Pharaoh, uh, in the court of Pharaoh against Pharaoh, you know, in support of Musa, salam, and the other one for the prophets in the time of Jesus in Surah Yasin. So he's known to be Habib. And he says, and the third Siddiq is Ali ibn Abi Talib, and he is Siddiq al-Akbar. He is the greatest Siddiq. Siddiq is someone who testifies the truthfulness of the message of 
the truthful prophet, meaning Sadiq Nabi, that he is, his message is Sidq, his message is true. And that's why Ali Nabi Talib is known to be a Siddiqul Akbar. So he is the greatest Siddiq. And that he lived in Mecca uh, to be the, the true uh, message barrier of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Very quickly, because the time is short uh, of the session, we will talk about two other attributes that he contained in himself. He also, um, you know, in Mecca, the life was very difficult. Poverty prevailed over uh, affluence because um, everything was being spent in the way of Islam. Khadija Salaam lost everything. So he proved to be the most patient. His patience. In fact, he says that I have so much patience that now the patience, sabr, itself uh, asks me, Ya Ali, how much more patience will you have? Obviously, he says that about the life of Medina after the Holy Prophet. But even in Mecca, he had the, the, the utmost level of patience. And the other attribute is that he was um, the um, decisive personality um, between truthfulness and, and uh, falsehood. He was al faruqul al-A'zam. He was the greatest uh, differenti differentiation between truthfulness, you know, the righteousness and falsehood. And hence Allah gave him a zulfiqar He gave him the sword zulfiqar which is basically the sword that has two uh, blades. And uh, when the Holy Prophet asked, was asked, Ya Rasulullah, why does it have two blades? And the Holy Prophet said, because it differentiates the sword. The sword differentiates between truth and falsehood. And that sword was given to Ali ibn Abi Talib So he was the greatest differentiation between truthful and falsehood. And hence the Holy Prophet says, Aliyun ma al haqqi wal haqqu ma aliyin. Ali is with the uh, righteousness and the truthfulness, and the righteousness is with Ali ibn Abi Talib. Allahumma dar al haqqa kama dara Ali. Wa Allah, uh, turn the truthfulness to where Ali turns. He doesn't say, Wa Allah, turn Ali to where the truthfulness turns. No, he says, Wa Allah, turn the truthfulness as Ali turns. Ali is the greatest criterion for. Uh, the the truth as the time has ended inshallah in the next session we'll talk about his life in Medina wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin masjid boli mimbar bola tera rajab ko kaaba bo